love and respect to a truly incredible woman, Leona Berkowitz. And I ask that you uh, take a moment to put your cell phone on silent or to turn it off at this time. At the beginning of the Torah, we read that God creates human beings by taking dust from the earth and breathing into that dust a nishmat chayim, a living soul. The Torah teaches us, in fact, that all human beings are composed of a physical body and a living soul. And then at the end of our days, our soul and our body separates once more. Our physical body returns to the dust that it was created from, and our soul returns to God. Today we have the opportunity to ensure that Leona's body is returned properly to its final resting place, and at the same time to honor her nishama, to honor her spirit, and ensure that it reaches its appropriate spiritual home. I'll begin with a chapter of Psalms, Psalm 23. Mizmar le David Adinai Roi Loersar. A psalm by David The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Bina Desha Yarbitseini Al Me Minu Hotina Leni. In lush meadows he lays me down beside tranquil waters, he leads me. Nafshi is Shovev, Yan Heni Vimaglet Sedek, the Man Shimo. He restores my soul. He leads me on paths of justice for his name's sake. Gam kielech begeit samavet lo irara kiata imadi shivtecha mishantecha hima yinachamuni. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you, God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Tarach lefanai shulcha neged sarai, dishant of Hashem in Roshi, kosirivaya. You prepare a table before me in full view of my adversaries. You have anointed my head with oil, yet my cup overflows. May only goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for the length of my days. At this time, I'd like to call up Murray, Leona's son, to share some words. Um, I was, before I begin, I was told not to refer to my mom as the old lady, even though I always called her that, but only with the greatest of respect. Our mother, our grandmother, our great-grandmother, our aunt, our cousin, and our friend, Leona Berkowitz, was one of a kind and a person of great kindness. The eldest child of Polish immigrants, Yiddel and Shana Salzburg, she began school speaking only Yiddish. She soon became acclimated and began lifelong friendships with people like Evelyn Horn and Helen Bletcher. Mom's example showed her children the value of a long-term relationship, something each of us has emulated and reaped the benefits from. Our mom, known to many as Mama Lee, as named by her first grandchild, Eric, was a joiner and a participant in organizations whose stated purposes was to help others. Whether it was the Shaker Lee Mothers Club or cooking Sunday morning breakfast at Hebrew School, or the Jewish War Veterans Auxiliary, or synagogue involvement, or baking cookies at Meyer's apartment to raise money for organizations such as the Gathering Place. Our mom throughout her life gave of her time to improve the world in small but significant ways. Mama Lee had a soft spot for people in need. I cannot tell you how many times someone a little different would show up at our dinner table. As kids, we called them weirdos. <laughs> Our mom called them friends. Then one time she went to a PTA meeting and found out about Jewish girls from broken homes who were living at Belfair but really needed a family environment and normalcy to succeed. Thus our mom and dad became foster parents. 
for the next 13 years from the time I was eight, we had one or two at a time teenage girls living with us and becoming an instant part of our family. Could any of you imagine doing this with the many demands of life? But my parents did, and they made it work for the betterment of everyone involved. I, being the only male child, once asked her, why not foster boys? She replied, boys are too difficult. <laughs> Mama, Me Mama Lee was all about relationships. She was married for 62 years to my dad. He was a big man physically with a loud voice and an occasional temper flare-up. But inside, he was kind and sweet, and our mom knew how to handle him and bring out the best. When we kids created the Willie Fan Club for my dad, a little out of fear and a lot out of love, my mom reveled in his adulation and attention. She was his number one fan. I remember hearing from my friends horror stories about how parents and in-laws did not get along. When each of us kids married at the tender age of 21, somehow my parents, and especially my mom, found a way not only to get along with her machatanum, but also to become really good friends. Here in each case, people from different backgrounds who, would never, who you would never imagine getting along spent the Jewish holidays and a great deal of time together. My mom engineered it, and her kids and grandkids benefited from it. My parents had a very special relationship with Mama Lee's sister Goldie and her husband Harry. They four together were a package deal. Growing up, it almost seemed like you had four parents and two additional siblings in Marlene and Larry. The folks went together everywhere. I remember a story that Uncle Harry recounted about their first trip together to Israel. It demonstrates my mom's special unspoiled Na I don't pronounce this wrong. She was naive. <laughs> they were taking a tour of the tunnels below the Wailing Wall and were being shown a section which had been unearthed. The guide stated, this area is undisturbed and remains as it existed over 1,000 years ago. My mom, my mom piped up and asked in her innocence, even the electric lights? Mama Lee's relationship with her sister Goldie was classic. They argued sometimes, they fought, they tattled about e one another, but they spent so much of their time together and took care of one another, especially after their s they lost their spouses. Their relationship worked for them and was one of the truest forms of love I have ever seen. Our mother's relationship with each of us, her children, and our resulting relationship with one another speaks volumes for my mother's love and wisdom. We were always separate but equal. We each felt a special bond for her. We each were inspired to emulate her caring for others, her kindness, and her participation that made a difference for people in a small but significant way. Whether we were nearby like Phyllis and Kenny, or Mary and I, or out of town like Frummy and Howard, we all felt an integral part of her life, and we spent time and effort willingly to aid her journey in life as she had done for us. Our mom had a special relationship with others who are here, and I would like to mention this. Her cousins, Francis and Stanley, who shared a house with her in childhood, and journeyed through the years with her. Cousin Elaine, who helped Mama Lee in many ways and visited often. Cousin Sarah Linda, who was so devoted to my mom and brought her joy and companionship. Great nephew, Rabbi Jeremy, whose weekly Shabbat Shalom calls filled her with a special anticipation and happiness. And of course, Denise, who as caretaker, but so much more as a friend, gave Mama Lee a tremendous quality of life in her last 10 years. My mom made a great impact at significant times in my life. First, when I was 10, I got mad at my mom and ran out slamming the back door. Glass shattered and I got scared. Instead of yelling at me, my mom, who never had a psychology course, 
sat me down and talked to me about having a temper and controlling it. I never forgot that lesson of life, and neither did she. Then when Beva passed away, and in less than six months we lost my dad, of all people who helped me, my mom became my confidant, my support, and the person who really understood what I was going through our relationship took on a whole new dimension, and she helped me beyond what I could have imagined. I leave you with this last story about a woman who was not vain, but always looked nice. Six months ago, Mama Lee tripped and scraped her arm coming out of the beauty shop. She denuded some skin, and De Denise wisely took her to the hospital. As the nurse cleaned her wound, he asked, fearing a possible concussion or worse, Mrs. Berkowitz, did you hit your head? Mama Lee replied, are you kidding and mess up my hair? <laughs> we will miss this woman with her blue eyes, her kind heart, and her lovely hair, who made an impact in a quiet, special way on so many of us, and we will live on personified, and she will live on personified in all our attitudes and actions. Mama Lee was one of a kind and a person of great kindness. I'd like to call up Pam Berkowitz, Leona's granddaughter, to share some words. I'm Pam Berkowitz, Murray's younger daughter, the second youngest Berkowitz grandchild, and our mom Lee's favorite. <laughs> As a child, I spent significant time with my grandparents, and occasionally, when I was alone with Mama Lee, she would put her hand on my cheek and say, Pamela, you are my favorite. I kept that secret until one day, not so many years ago, I saw Mom Lee turn to my sister and say, Stephanie, you are my favorite. <laughs> and soon thereafter, she turned to my cousin Danny and said, Danny, you are my favorite. <laughs> when I asked Mama Lee about what I assumed could only be a misunderstanding, she said, of course, you are all my favorite. And she was sincere. The truth is, you were probably her favorite too. Her favorite child. Her favorite grandchild or great-grandchild. Her favorite niece or nephew or cousin her favorite friend. Our mom, Lee, had the unique ability to accept people for exactly who they are. She saw your strengths and your weaknesses on your best days and your worst. She wasn't shy about telling you when she didn't agree with you, when she was disappointed in you, or when she disliked your fashion choices. <laughs> but regardless, she always, you always knew she would love and accept you just as you are. She made you feel safe and special and appreciated. And if she left me one legacy, it's that the people in this room are my favorite too. I'd like to call up Sophie Bravo, Leona's great-granddaughter, to share some words. I'm Sophie, Mama Lee's great-granddaughter. Mama Lee's grandchildren and great-grandchildren made a list of 100 things we love about her. We do not have time to read them all today, so here are some of our favorites. We love that Mama Lee is so accepting of people for who they are. We love that Mama Lee is kind to everyone she meets. We love that Mama Lee remembers to tell us she loves us. We love that Mama Lee loved Aunt Goldie so much, even when they made each other nuts. We love that Mama Lee taught us all to love each other. We love that Mama Lee is gracious. We love that Mama Lee is generous. We love that Mama Lee is charitable. We love that Mama Lee has many friends. We love that Mama Lee tells us good stories about the way things used to be. We love listening to Mama Lee tell stories about when the grandkids were young. We love that Mama Lee brings the family all together. We love that Mama Lee always puts her hair before anything else. <laughs> We love that Mama Lee would let us all cram into her apartment after Shabbat dinner when really she just wants to go to bed. 
We love that Mamali supervises the cooking to make sure it all meets her standards at the Jewish holidays. We love that Mamali says I know after you say I love you. We love that Mamali is always smiling. We love that Mamali always puts her family first. We love that Mamali speaks her mind. We love that Mamali is so wise. We love that Mamali appreciates everyone. We love that Mamali has three kids, nine grandkids, and 16 grand great grandkids. We love that Mamali's family is much bigger than that. I'd like to call up Rabbi Jeremy Wiederhorn, Leona's a great grand nephew, uh, to share some words. Pam, I was recently on the phone uh, with your mama Lee, and, and she said to me, Jeremy, you are my favorite. <laughs> and then there was this long pause as she was trying to figure out how to finish the sentence and then just said, Rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> true story. Absolutely true. Shammai taught in Pirkei Avot, Emor me'ad va'aseh harbeh, va'aveh me'kabel et kol ha'adam besever panim yafot that you should say little and do much and welcome everyone to receive everyone with a cheerful face and when thinking of my great aunt lee this is really i think at the heart of who she uh, who she really represented and who she was and her outlook in life i first realized uh, i think how special my aunt lee was when i was a child at my birthday, I would always receive a special envelope in the mail right on time, and I would open it up, and there would be a, a birthday card with a check inside for five dollars. Uh, and I would call and thank her, and she would tell me not to spend it all in one place, uh, which was difficult. Um, uh, but I managed to do it. Um, as I got older, um, obviously our, our, our relationship developed and uh, in recent years I would come to visit uh, my grandmother and, and Aunt Lee at, at Myers and um, my grandmother had a tendency of, of liking to show me off and, uh, and monopolize our time together but Aunt Lee was always very uh, patient. She would sit there and she would listen uh, without saying much at all. But when she did speak, uh, she spoke with, with tremendous thought and wisdom and always had something beautiful to say. Um, sometimes she would have to wait for my grandmother to go to the bathroom in order to get it out. Uh, but she would make sure that she always found a few minutes to, 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 spend, to spend with me. Um, and that was something that um, was really quite special. Right before my grandmother died, um, in one of my visits, I brought an orchid uh, for my grandmother and uh, she for the life of her could not figure out how to keep it alive and I tried explaining to her with the ice cube and trying to find the right place and this and that but she couldn't do it but after she passed away uh, Aunt Lee took over the orchid and almost immediately it started blooming and was and has and is absolutely uh, gorgeous and to this day five years later um, and I think that really represents um, Leona. Uh, she was able to, 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 to take anything and to bring incredible beauty uh, and life to it. Everything, everyone and everything that she touched really just turned to, turned to beauty, just like that orchid. And I have no doubt uh, that heaven is a happier, more beautiful place today because of its newest resident. May her memory forever be a blessing. I'd like to call up Rabbi Howard Kuttner from, Memora, uh, from Menorah Park to share some words. Uh, Jeremy, I was a little surprised to hear your opening story because I always thought that I was her favorite rabbi. <laughs> She had many favorites, and that's a good thing. Um, 
It's a very difficult moment for us here to say goodbye to uh, a woman who uh, lived uh, close to a century and uh, was truly extraordinary in many ways. Um, for many years, she came to my classes loyally at Myers. I found her to be an intelligent woman, always wanting to learn more. Uh, for many years, she came together with her sister, Goldie uh, Wiederhorn. And together, they sometimes asked some very good questions. Sometimes they would challenge me, and I always welcomed that. Uh, she often spoke to me about her family, her children, her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and how proud she was of all of them. Uh, she was always very friendly and outgoing. Anytime she would see me in the hall, uh, in, in, uh, or the hallways, in the lobby, of my always stop to speak and say hello and how are you, how's your family? And um, she was a woman of kindness, as we say in the Eshet Chayil Torat Chesed Al Lishona. The, 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 the law of kindness was on her tongue. Uh, she was gentle, she was soft spoken, easygoing, never had a harsh word for anybody that I saw. She lived a long life and uh, nearly a century. She witnessed many changes in the world uh, in her lifetime, and she went with the flow, adapting to new situations and changes, and changes in her life. But I think what I remember most about her was how proud she was when she stood as uh, one of the members of the senior uh, bat mitzvah class that I conducted at Myers. I think it was 2010, and uh, together with her sister Goldie as well, and how she read her prayers and spoke about her Parsha so eloquently and with such dignity and really a sense of accomplishment. And then there was uh, a cover story in a Cleveland Jewish News that had a picture of her, the, eight, uh, the women of, of Myers together with me, and the caption behind the picture was, uh, Myers Amazing Eight. There were eight women from Myers, but uh, Leona was indeed amazing. And uh, when I saw her in recent months, I couldn't help but think of the commercial for the Ever Ready Battery. <laughs> it says, just keeps on going and going. And uh, that was Leona. Until I was, I was taken by surprise on Friday when I f heard of her passing. Uh, but you, the family, could be very proud, very proud of her and, uh, and, the, life, and the, the life that she led. She leaves the world with a beautiful legacy, a beautiful family, and she leaves us with many great lessons that she taught us, and most important of all, she leaves us with a shame tove. She leaves us with a good name, a name that she earned for herself in her lifetime. To sit to Hey Zichra Baruch, may her memory be a blessing to us all. To Hey Nishmatatz Rura B'Tzor Hachayim, may her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Amen. To live a life of nearly one hundred years is nearly impossible for any of us to imagine. It's easy to think of it as a bracha, a blessing. That is, we say to people as they get older, ad mea vea srim, until 120, as was the age of Moshe Rabbeinu when he passed away. The fact is, however, is that it's not so easy. The older that you live, the more likely it is that you'll see the people that you love pass away. Physically, life gets harder when you get older. Injuries and illnesses don't heal as fast as one would like. Some days can be quite hard. Leona, however, showed us all that every day God gives us is a blessing. Despite the hardships, if we approach life with warmth and wit, joy and love, surrounded by the people we care about the most, then each day is the greatest gift that God 
could ever give us. Leona was born to parents Yiddel and Shana here in Cleveland. She was the oldest of three, the big sister. She grew up not just with her siblings, but her cousins. Her father was in the scrap business. She would go on to graduate from John Adams and worked as a receptionist first in a medical office and later in other positions as well. She met her beloved Willie at her cousin's wedding, only to see him drafted into World War II soon after. He was a tradesman, a carpenter, and he worked hard to provide for the family. While the kids were young, Leona was a stay-at-home mom, but she was always involved in the greater community around her. When the kids got a little older, she worked for the Phillips Stained Glass Studio, a job she loved. It brought her into contact with all sorts of different people. Leona just loved being with others. She loved participating in the broader community and giving back whenever and wherever she could. To give just some examples, she and her husband were very active in Jewish war veterans. They were legacy donors of the Jewish Federation despite not having as much as others. Nonetheless, they wanted to share what they did have. They were very involved over the years at the Warrensville Center Synagogue. She was an incredible volunteer right there side by side with her sister, always willing to help out whenever asked. She was even head of the sisterhood. And in fact, to this day on our Bima, there's a stender that I use, a podium right in front of me every Shabbos that was dedicated by her and her husband in honor of their 50th anniversary. You have to look to see the plaque to see that it's there, but that's who Leona was. She contributed it everywhere, and those contributions continue on far after. Yiddishkeit always played a big role in her and her family's life. It was in the air that they breathed and most certainly was in the food that she cooked. She kept a kosher home. Theirs was a house where one could feel it when it was Shabbos. And in addition to Shabbat, the Chagim, the holidays, were always a very special time when the family would come together. Leona, as you've heard, was incredibly beloved to each one of her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren. She had a special relationship with each one of them. And again, that unique ability, and it truly is, to make each one of them feel that they alone were her favorite. It needs to be mentioned, as it already was, just how special the relationship was that she shared with her sister Goldie. They were more than sisters. I would tell them that a lot when I would see them together, and especially after Goldie's passing. And there was a sublime joy that each one felt just by being in the presence of the other, that you had to see it to believe it. You could see it on their faces when the two of them would come to shul with their walkers and sit down right next to each other towards the front of the women's section. You could see it when they played Maj together or when they were sitting at the same table at Myers. Before Goldie's passing, it was also incredible to see the way in which Leona made sure that her children and grandchildren were to be like Goldie's own children and grandchildren. With the holiday of Purim, just a few days away, I cannot help but see parallels between the Megillah and the holiday and Leona's own life. The Megillah says that Esther was no sedchein be'enei kol ro'eha, that she found favor in the eyes of all who would see her, that she had chein. It's a difficult word to translate, but it essentially means grace. Like Esther, Leona had the most wonderful way about her, her wit, her amazing smile, the way she dressed, you could not help but be drawn in by this incredible woman. Now, the holiday of Purim itself is a day of great joy. And that's exactly how Leona lived each day of her life. And because Purim is a day of great joy, great simcha, we spend a lot of time enjoying ourselves. We eat, we drink, we have fun with others. And it's easy to think that the joy of Purim is all about the physical, a little wine, some good food. But if we were to think that, we'd be missing the point because the joy of Purim is not meant to be self-centered. Purim is a day of joy because it's also a day of giving to others. We reach out to connect to our fellow Jews through the giving of mashloach manot, little, little care packages that show our love and appreciation for them. And the excitement we feel when we receive a mashloach manot, these gifts from others, it's, it's electric and it serves to strengthen the bonds that holds us all together. 
However, we don't just stop there. We also give matanot levionim, gifts to the poor. Too often, it's easy when it comes to mashloach manot to limit our giving to those who are part of our social circle, those who are part of our close friends and family. And that's why on Purim we make this extra effort to give to the poor, to give to those outside our sphere, those who we normally perhaps turn a blind eye to, but who are in need. More than most, Leona understood the joy of giving, giving to those who had so little. As you heard Murray describe the incredible mitzvah that she and her husband engaged in by taking in, by, by becoming foster parents, by taking in these teenage girls in their home for years, girls who had, no little, had so little, had no place of their own, that Leona and Willie's home, that their family became their own. It's hard to even imagine this because taking in foster children is not easy work. It requires opening your home and making yourself vulnerable in a way that few of us are ever willing to do. But it's also the kind of work that changes lives. It's the kind of giving that turns those who are experiencing sorrow and gives them a true taste of joy. The Rambam, in his laws of Purim, Maimonides, he actually has a very important point about this that I think directly relates to how Leona gives her, lived her life. He says it's better that a person decides to give more to Matzanot Levioni, more to gifts to the poor, even if it means on Purim that the festive meal is a little smaller and that person has less money to spend on giving mashloach manot to their friends. Because there is no greater and magnificent joy than to bring happiness to the poor, the orphan, the widow, and the stranger. And he concludes by saying, one who gladdens the heart of the downtrodden is like the divine presence, it's like the Shekhinah itself. What the Rambam understands is that Sometimes, if we really want to give to those in need, it requires taking a little bit less for ourselves. It requires us to let go of some of our selfishness, our self-centeredness. To take in foster children requires that same sense of generosity. It means taking a little less for yourself to open up your home, to give to others. But that mitzvah is an incredible one. It's a divine mitzvah. It's godlike because you are taking in those who have nothing, those who are marginalized, those who have been potentially oppressed, and you are giving them a true sense of love and joy. And to do that is to be like God, God's self. Even up to nearly the age of 100, Leona lived a life of joy because she lived a life of giving. She touched her family and so many others in ways that cannot be fully put into words. I will say, however, that if any of you want to get a sense of the joy with which Leona lived her life, and it was a very special kind of joy of Simcha, all you have to do is look at the invitation that was sent out for what was supposed to be your 100th birthday party uh, in just two short months. Because if you look at that invitation, on it you will see a beautiful woman with the most beautiful and joyous smile on her face. As we say goodbye to Leona today, I know that her family wants to thank her for everything that she did for them, for truly teaching them what it means to give to others and leading through her incredible example of love. May her soul forever be bound up in the bonds of eternal life and may her memory forever be a blessing. At this time, I ask that people rise as we recite Kemal Rachamim, the memorial prayer. Kemal Rachamim, Shochem Bamramim, Amitse Minucha Nochana Kamfea Shechina, Bamalo Kedushim Torim, Kazara Kia Mazirim, Ed Nishmat, Lea Bat Yuda, Shelchal Olama. Bavor shekol kahal mi palel baras karad nishmata vegan en tiem nu chata lachem barachamim yasir hapes etok in a favli olamim vitzor bitzorchem in nishmata adnai nachalata betenu achal mishkev b'shalom v'nomar amen. O God, full of mercy, who dwells on high, grant proper rest in the wings of the divine presence in the loftiest levels of the holy and pure. 
which shine with the brightness of the firmament, to the soul of Leona Berkowitz, who has gone to her world and for whose memory we pray. May her resting place be in the Garden of Eden. May the master of mercy shelter her in the shelter of his wings for eternity. May he bind her soul in the bonds of life. May God be her heritage. May her repose be in peace. And now let us say, Amen. You may be seated. Shiva times for the family will begin today after the burial at the home of the Berkowitzes until 8 p.m. tonight. For Monday and Tuesday, Shiva will be from 1 to 4 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. From Wednesday, Shiva will move in the afternoon from 1 to 3 p.m. to be at Myers. And then starting Wednesday night and Thursday, it will be back at the Berkowitz residence. Even though there's no public mourning on the holiday of Purim on Wednesday night and Thursday, the family will still be having people come visit them uh, Wednesday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, at, their, at their home, Thursday from 1 to 4 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, and then Friday, uh, from the, the ship will continue from 1 uh, to 4 p.m. I'm going to ask at this time that the pallbearers come forward and we will pause for a minute or two as well while the family does Kriya, the ritual